B-SPAN, America's communication network for veterans. Welcome to the Veterans Special Programs American National Network, B-SPAN. Our B-SPAN spotlight today shines on 40 and 8. It's a service organization that's unique in many ways. It provides services to veterans, their families, and their communities, both here and abroad. Joining us today is our special guest from the 40 and 8, who is the National Public Relations Director, Bob Kierlock. Bob, welcome to VSPAN. The 40 and 8 is an organization that I think a lot of people have heard of but know very little about. Why don't we fix that problem? Yeah, we're a pretty stealthy organization. Uh, 40 and 8 is a by invitation only organization of veterans, uh, mainly those who have made a name for themselves in their own organizations like the American Legion, the VFW, AMVETS, uh, any number of other veterans organizations that our members have taken note of and uh, find that we uh, really ought to have them among us to help us with our program so that we can better help the other veterans organizations. Uh, the process is somewhat lengthy. Uh, a member of the 48 fills out a membership form, a, a nomination form as it were, recommending a, an individual. He has to convince three other voyagers to sign it with him uh, in the recommendation. Then it's brought before the promenade, which is what we call our meetings, uh, three different times uh, while the investigating committee gives their uh, opinions of it. Uh, once it's accepted and everybody agrees that this should be a member of the 40 and 8, then that uh, member is invited to join, which then is his decision, his decision alone. We only invite once. You either want to be a part of us or you don't, and uh, there's no hard feelings either way, because if we invite you, you're probably one of the best. So we're very proud of our members. Yeah, as well you should. Uh, the the name 40 and 8 has some very uh, uh, interesting uh, history going back to 1920. Yes, it was uh, originally formed by Legionnaires who came back from World War One. They uh, they formed it as a fun and honor society of the American Legion. Uh, they had a great sense of humor. They, uh, they named it after the uh, boxcars, that, uh, the narrow gauge French boxcars that took them to the battlefront. Uh, on the side of the boxcar was a 40 slash eight, which meant that the, the boxcar could either hold 40 men or eight horses. And uh, it says a lot about their sense of humor that they could laugh about being in the boxcar that just took eight, eight horses ahead of them. So uh, they, uh, they originally formed it, like I said, as a fun and honor society, which from that, uh, the Boxcar Association, which provides uh, a lot of funds for our other programs, but its main objective is the Children's Party at our national promenade, or our national convention where we uh, hold a party for local children, uh, usually uh, underprivileged children, and we give them rides on the what we call Lokis. They're uh, homemade locomotives uh, that uh, resemble those from World War I. And we have a, a ball with the kids, and the kids seem to really enjoy it. Now describe fun and honor. What, 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 what do you think that meant? Uh, well, it, me it meant that, you know, what we're here to do is to help each other, to help other veterans and, and their families, uh, their dependents. And, and not only that, we need to help our own community to, uh, when there's disasters and, and, uh, and personal disasters even. Uh, but you're always better at something when you're having fun doing it. You know that <laughs> as well as anybody. <laughs> If you don't enjoy what you're doing, you're not doing your best. And uh, these gentlemen recognize that. And they, they come up with the Box Set Car Association clowns. They, uh, they have uh, an initiation that has evolved over the years and, and become a little more tame. But 
back in its day, it rivaled the crossing the line ceremony in the Navy, if, uh, if you've ever heard of that, when you cross the equator. Uh, it got a little rough sometimes, but it, it was meant to be fun, and it was meant to, to test our true grit, I guess. But now it's, it's a very formal, uh, it has some fun and some jokes in it, but it's very formal and very informative as to the nature of the 40 and 8 and the, the pledge that you're giving to your fellow veterans. Now, my dad them. was uh, in the American Legion. Uh, he was part of the VFW also. And at the time, the American Legion uh, was the, uh, let's say, the, the uh, recipient organization for the 40 and 8. Mm -hmm. But that changed over a period of time. Yeah, in 1960, around 1960, they separated. Uh, it's a long story that I'm not even sure I know the, uh, the complete ins and outs of, but it, it, uh, it's one of those things where I believe that uh, we just went our separate ways due to funding and, and things of that sort. But the, the bottom line is, and one of the freedoms of the 40 and 8, and one of the things that allows us to do the things that other veterans organizations can't do is we're not chartered by Congress. We're not linked anyway to the government. Uh, if we want to change the rules, we don't have to go before Congress and get the charter changed. So that's one of the reasons I, I'm really enthusiastic about our organization because we have a chance to bend with the times and 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 come up with new programs and new ideas that that really help. For instance, our young vets coming back with with maladies that we never even thought about when I was in Vietnam or you were in Vietnam or World War II. Uh, it's a whole new set of programs and problems, or programs to match problems that, that we need to develop. And we're trying very hard to bring in younger veterans that know of these firsthand and can give us ideas how to help. Uh, our VAVS program, which is it's a part of the Veterans uh, Administration program, you know, where you actually have to be certified as a veteran volunteer also is linked to each individual hospital. Okay, It's not just a national level thing. And that's the other thing about the 48. We try very hard to remain at local levels. There is a, a whole different set of rules for a voiture, which is a boxcar, that's French for boxcar, which is what we call our local organizations. A whole different set of rules and guidelines for them versus a post who has either the VFW, American Legion, or AMVETS, or anybody else that has real estate and real property that they have to take care of and have to raise funds to maintain. And uh, We don't have that. We don't when have we were that. talking earlier, uh, Bob, uh, we talked, well, the, the, very, the very reason V-SPAN exists is to provide information to veterans and their families mm -hmm. on where to go for support, where to go for help, uh, where to go for uh, anything family-related or physical issues, mm -hmm. PTSD, and, and all of the issues that come with uh, uh, veterans returning home. And one of the things that we talked about is that the, uh, the service organizations can often be in conflict with one another because of the programs that they offer. Where we're looking for is a place where there's a synergy and people can work together. The 40 and 8 not being affiliated with any service organization means that your support can go to all of them. And does, yes. Tell us how. Well, I, I uh, talked about this at our national convention a little bit. We, uh, we are all chosen to become members of the 40 and 8 because of something we did that impressed somebody that was already a, a 40 and 8 -er. And over the past year, as I go to other VSO meetings and other organizations I belong to, I look at the, the struggles they're going through to just get enough for a quorum at a meeting. Okay, and when I look at who's there, I realized the other day that out of uh, 20 members at a meeting, 18 of them were 40 naders. And when I went to the next VSO meeting, 
I'm not naming the organizations, but the next one I went to, out of 16 that were there, 12 of them were 40 and 80. And that shows where we get our membership from. Those that are active and actually trying to, to put programs forward and, and do things for their post and do things for their community and do things for other veterans. And that makes you pretty proud when you look around and say, my God, you couldn't even have a, a quorum if it weren't for the 40 and 80. We're in a few moments be uh, talking about the programs that you do offer and uh, more programs that are available than we have time to talk about, but we're going to talk about some of the key ones. The, uh, the interesting thing that I, I wanted to get back to with the 40 and 8 uh, uh, French connection, if you will, <laughs> the French connection was interesting in the sense that uh, something happened like 30 years after the uh, organization was founded, and we were uh, uh, recognized by the French. Yeah, that was the, the, the Merci boxcar program. Right after World War II, the French people, uh, in gratitude for what the American doughboys did and the American uh, World War II veterans did in liberating France and saving France from Germany, put together 50 boxcars and filled them with gifts. And they went to the 48 states and, and uh, Washington, D.C., and I believe one other, uh, I can't think of off the top of my head right now, but each of those boxcars was unique to their endpoint, okay? They had designer uh, wedding dresses, uh, all kinds of gifts from, from France, perfumes and things of that sort, just for the people of that particular state or, or the District of Columbia. Uh, Mercy boxcars are still, still some of them around. Uh, Illinois' Mercy boxcar evidently was burned after uh, uh, one of the renovations around the uh, waterfront uh, took place. I believe it was uh, oh, 30, 40 years ago. And nobody even knew what the boxcar was all about at that time, and it just it, it disappeared. So we can't find ours, but I believe Texas, uh, North Dakota, South Dakota, some of those states all have them, and they have them pretty much built as a shrine, and they're very interesting. And as far as we know, uh, no horses were no, in there? No, no horses were in, though. In fact, uh, I'm not even sure they were 40 and 8 boxcars at that point. I think they were a little bit larger. But when you look at a picture of the old 40 and 8 uh, narrow-gauge railroad boxcar, it looks identical to the Mercedes, but the Mercedes were really prettily decorated and uh, had all kinds of French symbols on them and things. Okay, hence the French connection. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting and a very, very bright, vibrant uh, history of the 40 and 8. And the programs that uh, you offer, uh, we're going to get into a lot more detail. When we return, you're going to hear about some of those key programs that provide services to the veterans and their communities, one of which provides educational support in a very much needed field. This is V-SPAN. V-SPAN is a network designed to serve the American veteran. Its mission is to inform, inspire, enlighten, honor, remember, and entertain. Soldiers and veterans will not ask for our help, but it needs to be given nevertheless. Winston Churchill once said, Never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. This sentiment stands true today. Veterans deserve this. We, we owe them, not the other way around. It's time to pay back our debt to our soldiers and our veterans. It's time for V-SPAN. This is the Veterans Special Programs American National Network. Our V-SPAN Spotlight today is on the 40 and 8, and our guest is Bob Kirlock, the National Director of Public Relations for the 40 and 8. We're going to talk about some of the key programs that provide services to veterans and their families and their communities. One of the programs that uh, you provide is educational support in a very much needed field, nursing. Talk to us about that. Yeah, our, our nurses training program is, is uh, 
very locally oriented. It's it's a, a program that each vo locale voucher or local post uh, sponsors on their own with uh, support from Nationale if they need it. Uh, we have various various different versions of the nurses training program in each of the voucheurs. They they uh, provide funds from $300 a semester to sometimes a full boat, depending on what the size of the voyager is and, and what their assets are and, and their fundraising programs. Uh, even the, the smaller voyagers, the 20 or less uh, groups, can get funding from the, the Bull and Trust Fund, the, the national program, which is a, is a trust built just for the nursing training program. Uh, we're very proud of uh, the number of nurses that, that uh, 48 has put into service over the years and, and, and the quality of the nurses. Uh, we monitor their, their progress and we make sure that if they need anything, we're there to try to provide it for them. And uh, we give them their graduation pen when they're done and, and wish them well and, and try to keep up with their careers. But they're, it's, it's a, a program we're all very proud of. So. Bob, what are the criteria for the uh, nurses to apply for or be considered as a candidate? We have an uh, uh, application that uh, they can fill out and s submit to their local voice chair. Uh, uh, it's pretty straightforward, asking for grades and so on and so forth, just like any other application for a, for a scholarship. And uh, if we have the... the the funds available at that point in time, uh, they're called in and signed up for the program and given their money and wished best of luck. So it, it's not very complicated. It's not a long, drawn-out process. It's let us know you're there and you need help and we'll do our best to help. And this is uh, extended to veterans' families? Veterans or civilians. It, we just... We feel that nursing programs and nurses are the, some of the most important things we can help with. It, it began when, uh, after the wars, there was a very, very, very great need for nurses. And if uh, you've ever talked to a, a World War II veteran that ended up in one of the field hospitals, uh, the most important person in the world to him was a nurse. I mean, that, that was a vision of an angel. And, uh, probably more responsible for the recoveries that, that we've seen than anything else. So there's a, a real warm spot in the 40 and 8's heart for the nurses program. On this particular program, Bob, since it's available to uh, non-veteran families, mm -hmm. how would they find out about it? How would they know about it? Usually w they find out about it in a roundabout way, and that's uh, when a nurse's scholarship is awarded in one of the local communities and it's covered in the newspaper, uh, we can usually wiggle a little bit of information and publicity out of that so that the, the general public hears about it. Uh, but a lot of it's by word of mouth from, from nurses that have been through the program. Uh, they, uh, they know of a new young person that wants to get into nursing and, and they'll recommend that they check with the, the 40 and 8. I personally, uh, uh, long before I became a 40 eighter, when my father-in-law was a 40 eighter, uh, the neighbor that lived next door to him, their little girl wanted to be a nurse very badly. And when she graduated from high school, she uh, was looking for funds, and he got her a 40 and 8 scholarship. And to this day now, uh, and that, that was like 40 years ago, Today she's a uh, doctor, a, a, a dentist, hmm. and uh, it, it makes you really proud to have been a part of something like that. Even though I wasn't around at that time, that's that's the tradition we like to carry on. So, okay. And relative to the veterans, another program that I saw that uh, I think is worthy of talking about, as is all of them, was the uh, POW MIA program. Yeah, our POW MIA scholarship program is for. Uh, descendants of POWs and MIAs uh, 
kids, grandkids, whatever, that uh, need scholarships. And, and that's getting very, very hard to find these. Uh, I don't think we have issued one of those scholarships in Illinois in the, in the, in the last few years. Uh, we're having trouble finding those, those descendants that want to go to college. Uh, again, it's a very simple application, and, uh, and it is a nationally sponsored program. The funds come out of national for that, so uh, I think you've seen the, the POW pin I gave you a while ago. It, it's it's part of the fundraising that we do every year to supplement that that scholarship fund. So there's plenty of money there. We just don't have the applicants right now, and we're actively hunting for them. But uh, again, it's we're the stealth organization, and it's it's hard to uh, hard to get the word out. But hopefully, something like this will help. And uh, that's the intent. That's what B-SPAN is all about, Bob. Uh, so many of your programs are geared toward uh, families. Mm -hmm. The child welfare uh, scholarship is of particular interest. Yeah, the, the child welfare program, program. Is, is geared toward helping local families that are uh, victims of fire or, or natural disasters or, or any, you know, even uh, health problems that have caused uh, loss of jobs and things like that. It, that there's a real need for the for the kids. Uh, uh, I, I believe we had an article in our 49er News last spring about uh, the Voyager in, in Macomb. They had a fire, and uh, the local 49 took them to all the kids to, from the family to Walmart and bought them all new school clothes and, and, and out, outfitted them out. Uh, at the National Promenade, I, I was I was told about a a group in uh, South Carolina that uh, had much the same situation, and like I said, we're kind of the stealth organization. And when people saw them in Walmart with all these kids getting getting school clothes and things like that, and asked what was going on, and after it was explained that it was the 40 and 8, and we're just it was our child welfare program, and we we're trying to help this family get back on his feet and, and get the kids outfitted for school. It was amazing to the locale that a lot of the, the observers of what was going on started adding to the to the funds and uh, helping the family too. So it's that's the kind of thing that makes you proud to, to get involved in these programs. So. How many and, members? How many members are are there in the 40 and 8 nationally? Uh, about 32,000. It's a very small organization because, like I said, it's it's uh, it's an honor society and it's by invitation only. Uh, Illinois has only got a little over 1,800 members in, in the state of Illinois. So, uh, but uh, with the mighty mouse, you know, we uh, we're small, but we're uh, very active, and not just in the 40 and 8. Uh, we're very active in all the other VSOs. Uh, we don't take allegiance from any of those. And I, uh, I've been a, a life member of the VFW for, for several years and still very active in the VFW and very proud to be a member of the VFW. Been a Mary, uh, uh, member of the American Legion for 25, 30 years and very proud of that. Very proud of their programs uh, and work hard for them. But this is a way of it's like putting four or five veterans in, in in a room, all from different organizations, and trying to get them to agree on anything. And it, you know, it's it's like any other uh, subject you want to approach. Nobody's going to agree to anything, and we kind of act as a, a committee of one between the organizations and, and try to help it all come together. And, and that's. That's what's fun about it. I see the uh, the programs that you offer and the scholarships, the uh, child welfare program, the scholarships for the POW MIA, the nurses training, all heavily capital intensive. The fundraising in an economy like this has got to be a challenge. What are some of the tactics and, and programs that you use? Oh, it, it can go from uh, selling hot dogs on a corner <laughs> to uh, bingo, you know, the standard veterans fundraiser, the bingo. Some of our orchards have bingo nights. Uh, we have uh, steak nights. Uh, we have 
like motorcycle runs, poker runs, things of that sort. The standard that everybody else has used. Uh, and then we have the pins from each of the programs. The nurses training pins we sell for $3 a piece. That goes into the Bowling Trust Fund. Uh, the POW MIA pins, that helps support the, the POW MIA scholarship fund. Uh, and those pins are from National. They're filtered down to the locales and they sell them to members and to others. Uh, one of the premier programs is the Boxcar Association, which is open to everybody, not just veterans. We sell the membership in the Boxcar Association every year for a dollar a card, okay, and every dollar goes into the Boxcar Association who s pumps up, they take their funds and pump up the other programs that are having problems. And they support the National Children's Party at the, at the National Promenade. Tell us more about this Boxcar Association. What's the concept? What's the mission? The mission uh, originally was to, to raise funds to put on that big party for the kids, okay? Uh, but as, as it becomes so popular, they raised much more money than they needed for that particular uh, uh, event. So the boxcar director has started some years ago to take the funds and the other directors of other programs that are falling short or need more funds or have a special project, they can request the funds from the boxcar association and he gives them the extra money. Oh, so there you go. Uh, the Boxcar Association gives money to our National Hero of the Year to support him getting to the to the promenade to be honored. Uh, it's it's the catch-all program, I guess go. you'd call it, <laughs> that we have a lot of fun with. There you go. What an organization, the 40 and 8, and one that we probably haven't heard a whole lot about. When you talked about the uh, Americanism Award, uh, that brings up a big topic that we're going to be getting into when we return. We're going to be talking about something that's turned into more of a marketing slogan than a genuine American attribute. This is Beastman. Hi, I'm Ernie Scanton, Education Director here at Illinois Center for Broadcasting, the downtown campus. And I am also a U.S. Navy veteran. I served in the Navy from 1987 until 1991, and it was four of the best years of my life. They made me grow up and they allowed me to do things that I normally wouldn't have been able to do and they, they let me tap potential that I didn't know I had. But knowing that I had something to do with maybe defending this nation or giving back to a place that has given so much to me and my family, it made me feel good. One day as I was on my way to work, I, um, I heard a commercial saying, if you want to be on the air, go to Illinois Center for Broadcasting. And I said yes. I called that day, I went that night for my test and I passed and in a week I was in school. I've never looked back. I walked out of school into a 1,000 watt, into a 50,000 watt station, ESPN 1000 here in Chicago and I didn't leave for nine years. I owe all that to ICB. You know, I guess to sum it all up, the Navy prepared me for life, but ICB prepared me for my future and, and, and what I have now, my future in broadcasting. Today's V-SPAN Spotlight is on the 40 and 8 service organization. Our guest is the Public Relations National Director, Bob Kierlock. And Bob, one of the uh, uh, functions of the 40 and 8 is to identify heroes, if you will, uh, an individual who personifies Americanism. Tell us about the, uh, the program, the award, and our recent winner. The, uh, the recent winner, first of all, the, the award is, is well described on our website. and it It's an application. and. Uh, the, the nominees are sent in to the National Director for Americanism, and he peruses all of them, I assure you, very carefully, and, and selects the National Awardee. Uh, this year it was uh, Captain, a retired Captain William A. Robinson from uh, Vietnam uh, Air Force. He was the uh, longest held prisoner of war, NCO, prisoner of war during Vietnam. Uh, had the pleasure of hearing him speak at, at the National Promenade after, after the award ceremonies and at the dinner. And it's an amazing story, an amazing story. And as, as I said, he retired as a captain, so uh, uh, he does a lot of speaking to different groups now. And 
if you ever have a chance to hear, hear him speak, it's, it's pretty amazing. Uh, those are the types of people that we, we award the Americanism Award to. We have several awards that we give for heroism, for law officer of the year. Uh, you were speaking of fundraising. Uh, we have an organization called the Generals Club. Okay, I think you'll see the five stars on my chapeau. Uh, that Generals Club uh, membership every year helps us pay for the law officer of the year award that brings in uh, one law officer from all over the, the, the nation that is uh, voted to be the law officer of the year. Each grand or state has their own, and we here in Illinois had one, and we submit the, their stories to the national and they select the law officer of the year. This year it was a postal inspector, which uh, you may not even think of them as law officers, but it, it was a very good story behind him. Uh, the hero of the year is the same same process. Uh, each grand selects a hero of the year based on some heroic act that has been reported and written up by a, a void chair and submitted. And this year, Illinois was was honored by having the national hero of the year uh, from a small town in southern Illinois. And uh, it, it was a, a blast to see him honored, and, and he did us all very well. Well-spoken young man uh, with a lot of guts and courage. So we're all proud of it. All of the uh, the men and women who uh, epitomize Americanism, if you will. And when you think about America, uh, you can't help but think of the Pledge of Allegiance. And as we had mentioned uh, earlier, uh, all too often, Bob, the, uh, the words are just spoken rote. You just say the words. And rarely do we really think about what those words mean. You know, nothing speaks to Americanism like the Pledge of Allegiance, once again. But when we recite it, we've got to do something different than just speak the words and not think about what those words really mean. Let's listen to what those words really mean. I remember a teacher that I had. Now, I only, I went, I went through the seventh grade. I went to the seventh grade. And I left home when I was 10 years old because I was hungry. And I used to, this is, this is true. I work in the summer and I go to school in the winter. But I had this one teacher. It was the principal of the Harrison School in Vincennes, Indiana. To me, this was the greatest teacher, a real sage of, of my time, anyhow. He had such wisdom. And we were all reciting the Pledge of Allegiance one day. And he walked over, this little old teacher, Mr. Laswell was his name. Mr. Laswell, and he says, uh, <clears throat> he says, I've been listening to you boys and girls recite the Pledge of Allegiance all semester, and it seems as though it's becoming monotonous to you. If I may, may I recite it and try to explain to you the meaning of each word. I, me, an individual, a committee of one, pledge, dedicate all of my worldly goods to give without self-pity, allegiance, my love and my devotion to the flag, our standard, O oh glory, a symbol of freedom, wherever she waves, there's respect, because your loyalty has given her a dignity that shouts freedom is everybody's job. United, that means that we have all come together. States, individual communities that have united into 48 great states, 48 individual communities with pride and dignity and purpose all divided with imaginary boundaries, yet united to a common purpose, and that's love for country. And to the Republic, Republic, a state in which sovereign power is invested in representative chosen by the people to govern. And government is the people, 
And it's from the people to the leaders, not from the leaders to the people, for which it stands. One nation, one nation, meaning so blessed by God, indivisible, incapable of being divided with liberty, which is freedom, the right of power to live one's own life without threats, fear, or some sort of retaliation. And justice, the principle or qualities of dealing fairly with others. For all, for all, which means boys and girls, it's as much your country as it is mine. And now, boys and girls, let me hear you recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Since I was a small boy, two states have been added to our country and two words have been added to the Pledge of Allegiance under God. Wouldn't it be a pity if someone said that is a prayer and that would be eliminated from schools too? Red Skelton, sharing Mr. Laswell's wisdom of what America is. The Harrison School in Vincennes, Indiana is no longer there, but the lesson taught then still applies today. Uh, thank you for the Americanism Award, which really epitomizes what this whole thing is all about. This is uh, uh, Bob uh, Keelock. You know, uh, Bob, my dad, I said earlier in the show, was a member of the 40 and 80. And uh, one of the, when he would come home from the meetings at that time, this was in the late 50s, uh, would come home and he said, well, I had a good time, but I can't tell you what we talked about. <laughs> Was he just goofing around, or was there like a secret? Uh, no, there, we we have a password, and we have a, a, a guard to Laporte, and we we don't normally have uh, non-members in the meetings unless it's a special occasion. But uh, it's a lot less secret than we like to think. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of fun with that because uh, you're talking about raising funds. We we find people. Uh, that come to a, a promenade and forget the password. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that can cost them anywhere from 25 cents to $5 for forgetting the password. Well, there you go. So there you go. we have a lot of fun with all of that. Uh, but as far as being a secret society, no, that's not, that's not what we are. <laughs> okay, so he wasn't fibbing me. Was he? <laughs> no, no, uh, he, wasn't. he wasn't. Well, you've got uh, a, a really interesting story to tell, the uh, 40 and 8 offers so much in being a, so to speak, bipartisan organization that is not affiliated directly with that any service organization, but works with them. Uh, it's something to sit up and take notice of. And the, uh, the, the interesting thing is being an invitation-only organization, mm -hmm. uh, while you can't join outright if solicited and asked to join, you might want to consider it. Our V-SPAN Spotlight was on the 40 and 8. For more information, visit 40and8.org. Org. That's their website, spelled out www.40and8.org. This program was made possible through the studios and future broadcast professionals at the Illinois Center for Broadcasting, Lombard Campus, where broadcasting careers begin. Visit beonair.com for more information about a career on radio and TV. You're watching the Veterans Special Programs, American National Network. This is V-SPAN.